and today I am outside in the garden getting ready to plant sweet potatoes a few more I've already planted some in this raised bed right here you can't see it but I've already planted some in the raised bed now you all why am I sweet potatoes for dog food <laughs> well number one is because dog food is getting so expensive you all so very expensive so the best way for us to su to supplement their food is by growing things that we can freeze dry dehydrate or just freeze for them to eat to add to other things that we're doing on the homestead to be able to feed our dogs in the event that dog food becomes just way too expensive for us to buy so what we're doing is that we are utilizing what we have and that is our garden space to grow them some food but we're going to talk more about supplementing our dog's feed after we get the rest of these slips planted okay all right y'all so i'm not editing i'm going to go ahead and angle the camera down i'm going to get to work and i'll talk to you all while i'm doing it okay so let me go ahead and move this camera oh there we go i think y'all can see the whole bed all right So I'm just going to be using this little battling hoe right here. And I have some fertilizers in here. This is uh, feather meal, blood meal, and potassium in this bucket. And I'm going to cross over and go ahead and get this done. y'all so all I'm doing is I'm just gonna make a trench here moving all of the soil and the leaves out of the way in this bed you all we bring y'all closer want y'all to be able to see <laughs> whoops whoops there we go all right so now that i have my trench dug in this bed all I'm gonna do is just take my fertilizers and go down this trench. And that's it. I'm gonna take out my slips. And what I'm doing is I'm planting them about a foot apart in this, tre in this trench here. Okay, I hope y'all can see me, but I'm planting them about a foot apart in my trench. I'm going to bring y'all even closer so you all can see. Right, let me show you. I'm sorry about all the moving, but I really want you all to see how I'm planting this, okay? The way that I'm doing this is just um it's just super simple to do it this way to me. 
because these slips, the sweet potatoes are gonna bind like crazy. So I wanna make sure that the way I'm planting them, that um, they will have the space needed to vine. And I'm trying to channel the direction of the vines too, the best as I can, but let me show you. Okay, so hopefully you all can see that. There we go. I hope y'all can see it. <laughs> okay, so now these are down. Can y'all see me? No, y'all can't see me. Ugh. Okay, let's just go over here, okay? <laughs> Woo. All right, y'all. Now that we're over here, so again, sorry about all the moving, but I really want y'all to see. That's all. I just want y'all to see what I'm doing. Okay. So now I think you can see now that there we go. Yeah. Okay. I think you can see now, I just have a trench dug out here and I just literally took the slips and just laid it in the trench and I did it at an angle because out, out of my beds, Jax, get out of there. Okay, so I laid them down in this trench and I have these on this row in this trench and going in that direction and these going in this direction. And I guess I'm just hoping to be able to control the vines so they're just not all out everywhere, even though I know they vine quite a bit, all right? So I've already just taken the fertilizers and put it in the trench, you saw that. But then I'm just gonna take the soil and just cover that back up like that and pat that down. And then I'm covering it back over with the leaves as well. Now this is, um, this raised bed here in the fall, I literally just take the leaves and put them in the raised bed. I take the leaves and put them in the raised bed. And what that does, as the leaves start to break down, it brings worms to the bed as well, okay? It brings lots and lots of worms to the garden bed. So I'm just pulling all of this down. Ugh. Let me grab some more soil from this end. There we go. Now, and I'm just making sure that I tamp that down gently to get a good contact. Like I said, you all, I dropped them. <laughs> there are worms in this bed everywhere because they love the moist leaves and whatnot. So I'm gonna put leaves back over all of this here. And the leaves make a great mulch as well, you all. But they also, yeah, they also uh, make a great mulch, which helps to hold in the moisture once I wet this down. Okay, so now let's get you back up. All right, so that's literally how I'm planting my sweet potatoes, you all. Just covering them back up with the leaves and everything else. And then I'm going to water this in. And that's going to be that. I'm going to end up spreading more leaves around here in just a little bit. But yeah, it's that simple. Now let's talk about why we're doing this again for our dogs, okay? I got to water this in. I hope I don't forget but I gotta water that in. 
we're going to go get in some shade. I sure hate to step over this bed again, but I'm going <laughs> to. I'm going to step over. Come on, let's go get in the shade and talk about this. All right, y'all. It's warm out here, too, this morning. All right, here we go. I know I be moving y'all a lot. Y'all see that quail hutch right there? That's awesome, isn't it? That's a beautiful quail hutch that my son put together. He put it together for us, right? And uh, it looks nice, but we're going to show you that quail hutch in more detail, more detail here in a second or in another video. But in any case, you all, oh, that's better. In any case, what we are doing, because prices are so high, getting higher and higher when it comes to your animal feed, your livestock feed, it's getting so expensive, right? So, Mr. H and I were talking and we were thinking like, what are we going to do if we get priced out of being able to buy feed for our dogs? We just can't let them starve. So what are we going to do? Right? So you all, we started thinking about a more natural diet for them. And some of you even sent recipes uh, to us regarding the natural diet that you feed your dogs, which is a raw diet, whether it's vegetables and meats or whatnot, it's a raw diet. So that's what we are doing. We're trying to figure out how can we do this independent of, independent of any type of manufacturing uh, company or any particular brand how can we do it? And one of the things that we came up with, of course, was um, sweet peas, sweet potatoes, um, chicken, just all kinds of meats and vegetables that the dogs would eat. Okay? Now, y'all growing sweet potatoes just for the dogs? What about y'all? <laughs> We don't eat sweet potatoes. <laughs> we don't like them, right? That's why you've never seen us grow them on the homestead because we're just not people who eat sweet potatoes or yams for that matter. You know, neither of those. We don't eat those. So we have decided to grow them for our dogs because we know our dogs would probably love them, right? So we have that one uh, four by eight foot bed of nothing but sweet potatoes. And if this works out well, then we're gonna have to expand that for them. We're gonna have to expand that for them and start learning about, well, how much is it gonna take to feed them, right? How much sweet potatoes and peas and chicken <laughs> and all of that do they need from season to season, okay? How much do they need from year to year? What is that gonna look like for our dogs? The good thing about raising a chick ants, oh, the good thing, the good things about raising your own chickens is that and when you have an incubator in our case we can always incubate eggs right we can always incubate eggs hatch out chickens and then we can always process the chickens that we hatch out for our boys especially the roosters right because we just don't need a farm full of roosters right so that's something that we can do as well. and um and other crops that they may enjoy, okay? So that's why we're doing this. We're literally testing this out for Grizzly, Tamu, and for Jackson, all right? Now, Jackson don't eat as much <laughs> as Grizzly Moo does. 
them some big dogs can eat pretty good. <laughs> but we're learning. One of you uh, even said that because you do feed them a raw diet, um, you only feed your dogs once every other day. Now, I don't know how that would fare <laughs> with our dogs. Now, sometimes we do skip a day with them, but it's because they let us know that that's what they want, right? Because sometimes we'll feed them and they won't eat. So, and if they don't eat, that means, okay, they need to fast for that for the next day. Or it means that <laughs> they didn't found something else to eat. <laughs> Because, you know, they are notorious for bringing home deer carcasses, right? So, um, we don't know how that would fare with them because we don't want any type of food aggression here on the farm from our dogs, right? So, we want them to be calm and they let us know when they want to eat and when they don't. And when they don't eat, that's fine. We take the food away and um, the next day they eat, you know? So Grizz and Moo will do that sometimes. They'll, they'll decide, you know what, I ain't hungry today. <laughs> and so they won't eat anything at all. The food will just sit there and just sit there, you know? And so we'll take it to keep other um, rodents and ants and all of that from getting in their food after we realize they're not gonna eat it. And they'd be good. And then the next day when we take them something to eat, they'd be ready to eat, you know? So sometimes they'll let us know when they wanna fast for a day. You know, but you all, woo! but you all, that's what we're doing. We are trying to be very creative. We're trying to be very creative with how we feed our dogs. What can we do, right? And in thinking about that, also we were thinking about us. Like, what could we do? <laughs> because we do order meat birds um, every year. And we do have a solution to that as well. And we're gonna talk to you all about that in another video, okay? But y'all, that's gonna do it. I just wanted to bring you all along with me and show you I got those sweet potatoes planted for our dogs. And we're coming up with other ways too that we can feed them. Like what else do they, like what else when we think about a raw food diet you know i'm always researching like when you create a raw food diet for your dogs what does that consist of other than the meats what other veggies and whatnot does that consist of and fruit even and so i'm thinking well can we do that here on our homestead can we do that for our dogs right and what would it take to do that for an entire season and how would we go about preserving that for them as well okay so that's just food for thought <laughs> as we try to figure this out for our dogs you all because i'm telling you as we struggle to try to um, prepare ourselves and feed our family in the event that there's a complete breakdown in supply food supply and other supplies as we work this out for us and our families like many of you thousands of you are doing right we can't forget about our animals we can't forget our animals you all and that is one of the things that i don't want to watch i don't want to have to be concerned about our animals not being able to eat okay so that's what we're trying to come up with what can that diet look like and what can we do to preserve that okay so now some of you have even talked to us about grinding up um the meat and just boiling it and some of you freeze dry it and we're going to talk about that freeze drying too and some of you freeze dry and put it away and that way all you have to do is put it in their bowl and add water right so we appreciate the feedback that we're getting because we're learning a lot from the research that we're doing and we're learning a lot from what you all are sharing with us as well. So we got to keep that going. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because I really want to put it out there to make it a conversation for all of us, right? So that we can, in the comment section, 
have that discussion and help one another figure out what can we do during times like this where it's getting harder and harder to be able to afford the things that they are putting on the shelf okay so y'all post in the comment section your recipes help let's help each other what are your recipes if you do raw diets for your dog do you preserve it what's your plan for the future in the event you cannot buy the processed food what's your plans for the future so please share that with us in the comment section and again and again post your recipes in as well in the comment section below let's talk about it let's help one another okay all right y'all thank y'all so much for watching this morning thank you for joining me here at home stay at heart i hope you all are having an amazing day week month and year thus far okay all right peace and blessings to each and every one of you i'm gonna see y'all in the next video